Jojoki got the sauce, bitch. What's up guys? Welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, I'm Isaac Oson. For today's topic, we are going to discuss, is the iPhone 6 Plus still worth buying in 2021? But before we start, roll intro. The iPhone 6s Plus has a glass front in which the back and the frame are from aluminum. It weighs 192 grams which feels kinda hefty in my opinion. One aspect that contributed to the weight of the iPhone 6s Plus is the finer and more exquisite aluminum build which is known as the 7000 series in contrast to the 5000 series with the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus. With this, it gives both models a more durable and sturdy finish which makes it more resilient when it comes to either dropping or unconsciously or consciously bending the phone as well as placing it in our pockets or tight bags. It came with four color variants namely, silver, space, grey, gold, and rose gold which was first introduced with the S models. Let us now discuss the parts. Okay. On this side, we have the power button and the same slot. On the other side, we have volume buttons and a ringer switch. Below, we have a speaker, lightning port, and a headphone jack, which was sadly the last iPhone to have this feature along the iPhone SE first generation. At the back, we have a single camera sensor, which we'll discuss later. In front, we have a 5.5-inch screen display, which we'll discuss in depth later. Below that, we have a mechanical home button and a second gen touch ID. It was the first iPhone to have this kind of fingerprint recognition alongside the iPhone 6s, which by means of speed, it is very responsive, fast, and accurate. So design-wise, it is technically similar to its predecessors, like literally. The dimensions, proportions, you name it, are almost identical in most angles that typical people perceive a phone. In layman's term, they are the same in terms of the design but only differ in the matters of hardware specifications and the aluminum type used to build the iPhone 6s Plus which were both explained earlier. Ergonomics wise, in my opinion, it is just somehow a bit too big. I mean ironically, I have somewhat large hands but then, phones like the Plus models are not my type to be straightforward. But yeah, disregarding that, when it comes to its looks, I can still consider it relevant in today's standards. It doesn't seem to look outdated like the counterpart Android phones that came out along the iPhone 6s Plus. But the only thing that bugs me off are the paint chips. I mean technically this phone is in pristine condition but to the models I used during the day was pretty much a deal breaker for me. But looking at the bright side, we can simply avoid that by putting a case. The iPhone 6s Plus features an IPS display which has 5.5 inches with a screen to body ratio of 67.7%. It has a screen resolution of 1080 by 1920 pixels and a pixel density of 401. Display in general is fantastic. Even though having the presence of OLED or AMOLED displays with their current flagships, the 6s Plus is not that far away from those. It still produces a sharp and vibrant display across the board and whichever angle you look at. So yeah, to cut the long explanation short, the resolution it generates is very natural and not saturated, in contrast to most Android counterparts back in the day. So by means of the screen size in my opinion, it is just the perfect size for movie or YouTube watching as well as gaming. The 6s Plus started from iOS 9, then upgradable to the latest software. And fun fact, it is now officially the iPhone that has the most supported update by Apple replacing the 5S. It is powered by an Apple A9 chip which has dual core CPU and 6 core graphics. It packs 2GB of RAM and the available ROM or storage are as follows, 16, 32, 64, and 128GB. I know, most tech YouTubers that covered a review about the iPhone 6s Plus stated similar opinions. This phone still performs greatly or like a flagship. 
simple activities such as scrolling our feed in various social media applications or going through different apps can still somehow produce a good performance but far from great. Gaming-wise, it is a no, I'm sorry. Contrary to popular belief, lags and frame drops are often felt with this phone, making it not knowledgeable or practical to be used as a gaming device if you plan to be a hardcore gamer. However, I'm not saying that it is not usable. It's just that I've been using both the iPhone 6s and 6s Plus, and to my surprise, the iPhone 6s outperforms the 6s Plus in most cases. But yeah, looking at the flip side, and to make everyone not disappointed, no 5-year-old phone can be better or as good as this phone. The 6S Plus has a 12MP sensor with an f-stop 2.2 aperture. It has a variety of video resolutions namely 720p at 30fps, 1080p at 30 or 60fps, and 4K at 30fps. Which again, fun fact, this was the first iPhone capable of shooting in 4K. To be honest, I really had high hopes about the camera quality, given the fact that the 6S produced highly decent shots in our recent videos. But to my surprise, I kinda became disappointed. Photos appear to be somehow washed out and wobbly which really bugs me off. But yeah, in general, the camera is good to say at least but not great. And also, I can somehow consider it relevant in today's standards. So here are some shots to see it for yourself. The front camera has 5 megapixels with an f-stop 2.2 aperture. It has a video resolution of 720p at 30fps. The front camera is fine as well. I don't expect much from the front camera of any old iPhones, but this is still good considering its age. In addition, it had a massive upgrade in contrast to the 1.2 megapixel sensors with the predecessors, which is a plus point. So here are some shots to see it for yourself. This is the front camera of the iPhone 6s Plus. It is just essentially similar to the general specifications of the iPhone 6s. It has 1080p at 30fps, which in my opinion is not reasonable or is not practical to be used for vlogs. The iPhone 6s Plus has a 2750 mAh. Battery life is supposed to be decent since typical stereotype about plus models or big phones in general can stand the test of time. But in my phone's case, I don't know why, <laughs> it is not. But hypothetically, most big and plus models in good condition can perform well because I believe this phone is somehow in a not so good condition which is probably the reason why this phone is not performing well. So guys, if you're planning to buy one, we can purchase one for as low as 6,000 pesos up to 8,000 pesos and with that price range, it is still a good investment. However, I suggest if you can add a couple more, kindly go for the iPhone 7 Plus and trust me, it will satisfy all your needs for a phone. So guys, if you're an iPhone 6s Plus user or you've used one, please comment below your experiences with it. Let's communicate and socialize and have a community and help enlighten people planning to buy iPhones. And lastly guys, let's do some shoutouts. So for the shoutout segment guys, I'll be doing this live, so I apologize if there's any external background noises. So I'll be using my... My mini so microphone. So with that being said, let's start the shoutouts. So first shoutout goes to Abigail Cruz. So shout out to you Abigail, stay safe and study hard and make your parents proud. Nice. Next shoutout goes to Yam Yam. So shout out to you Yam... So shout out to Yam... Ah! So shout... So shout out to Yum Yum, stay safe. Okay. Next shout out goes to Ginny VV or Ginny Viv. What? Can you be my baby? Shout out to Ginny Viv Dominic. So shout out to you, stay safe and God bless.
Anyway guys, if you want a shoutout, just comment below anything with the hashtag Ezek Shoutouts. So guys, that's pretty much the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.